Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to present a couple of problems related to conditional trigonometric identities. Um, as a matter of fact, three problems and a couple of extensions. All right, so um, as you remember, a conditional trigonometric identity is basically a theorem where there is something, some condition which is given to you. Usually it's about angles or some trigonometric functions of these angles. And then another trigonometric um, equality should be proven. All right, so number one, there are three acute angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, related to this equality. So, the angle alpha is equal to the sum of beta and gamma, and they are all acute angles. Now, what we have to prove is the following. That tangent alpha plus cotangent beta plus cotangent gamma equals to their product. So, some of these three uh, numbers equals to their product. Well, first of all, I said that these three angles are acute, which means we don't really have to worry about whether tangent actually is, or, co or cotangent for the same matter, defined or not defined. So, we can manipulate with these uh, functions, tangent and cotangent, quite freely. Now, Obviously, I have to express tangent alpha in terms of beta and gamma. I mean, that, that's, that's basically what the whole thing is about, right? Now, um, I do not remember the function, um, the expression of the tangent of sum of two angles. So, um, tangent alpha, which is tangent of beta plus gamma, I do not remember the formula, and I, I always brag about that I don't remember the formulas, but I can derive them. Well, in this particular case, I will derive them um, from something which I do remember. Actually, sine and cosine, I do remember. So let's just uh, very briefly explain how I derive this type of thing, right? Now, sine of sum is sine cosine plus cosine sine. You see, I do remember something. Now, for the cosine, it's cosine, cosine, and then since this is a plus, the cosine has a minus. So, cosine beta, cosine gamma, minus sine sine. Now, Obviously, I would like to express it in terms of tangent, should be expressed in terms of tangent, but in this particular case, you see there are all others are cotangent. So I would like actually to express the tangent of sum of two angles in terms of cotangent of each individual one. Now, I do remember that if I would like to express in terms of tangent, I have to divide numerator and denominator by cosine, cosine, in which case I will have here uh, tangent of beta, because this will be reduced, and in this case would be uh, tangent alpha, because this would be reduced. And here I will have 1 minus tangent times tangent, tangent. Now, since I would like to express it in terms of cotangent, I'd rather divide it by sine sine. Now, what happens is, if I divide sine cosine by sine sine, my sine beta will uh, be reduced, and that will have only cosine divided by sine of um, gamma, which is cotangent gamma plus. If I divide this by sine sine, now my sine gamma will be reduced, and I will have cosine beta divided by sine beta, which is cotangent beta. Here, cosine times cosine divided by sine by sine, this is the product of cotangents. minus 1, right? So that's what happens if I divide 
numerator and denominator by, by sine beta sine gamma. So I will use this expression instead of tangent alpha in this particular um, equality, uh, which I would like to prove. And again, considering all angles alpha, beta, and gamma are uh, acute angles, I don't have to worry about when this particular cotangent exists, uh, whenever the denominator equals to zero, etc. This is all um, not really the case. All right, so, okay. Uh, now, let's just substitute this and see what happens. If we will get identity, if I will substitute this as a tangent, then my work is done. All right, so if I put it here, I will have cotangent gamma plus cotangent beta divided by cotangent beta cotangent gamma minus 1 plus cotangent beta plus cotangent gamma. That's on the left side, right? Um, obviously, I have to use the common denominator in this particular case, which is this. So if I will multiply this times this, I will have cotangent gamma plus cotangent beta plus multiply this times this. I will have cotangent square beta cotangent gamma. Now, by this, I will have cotangent beta cotangent square gamma. And then minus 1 which is minus cotangent beta minus cotangent gamma. That's what I have in the numerator. Now, denominator is exactly the same. Cotangent beta, cotangent gamma minus 1. Now, as you see, cotangent gamma will be reduced and cotangent beta will be reduced. So I will have only these two divided by these. So that's my... That's my left side. So um, I will have, actually I can uh, factor out cotangent beta, cotangent gamma here. Cotangent beta, cotangent gamma times cotangent beta plus cotangent gamma divided by cotangent beta, cotangent gamma minus 1. That's my left part. Now let's talk about the right part. So instead of tangent alpha, I will put cotangent beta plus cotangent gamma divided by cotangent beta cotangent gamma minus 1 times cotangent beta and cotangent gamma. Well, lo and behold, this is exactly the same as this one. So my identity has been proven. That's it. And the proof. Next. Next is the following problem. I have a circle and inscribed in that circle quadrilateral with angles alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. I have to prove that cosine square alpha plus cosine square beta plus cosine square gamma plus cosine square delta minus 2 equals 2. 2 times product of their cosines cosine 
alfa, cosine, beta, cosine, gamma, cosine, delta, minus product of their sines. That's what needs to be proven. Okay. Now, this property of uh, this particular quadrilateral, so it's a convex quadrilateral inscribed into a circle. Now, what's the um, one of the fundamental properties of this type of, of angles of this particular uh, quadrilateral? Well, obviously, sum of the opposite angles is equal to 180 degrees pi. Why? For a very simple reason. This uh, angle, let's call it A, B, C, D, angle, let's say, A, A, D, C, is inscribed, and this is uh, uh, part of the circle, uh, the R, which is supported this angle. Now, the opposite angle is supported by the, the, the rest of the circle, right? So sum of the, now every inscribed angle is measured as half of the central angle, which is supported by the same arc. So basically you have, uh, obviously, the uh, sum of these two angles is equal to sum of the full angle divided by, by, by two. So, alpha plus gamma equals pi, beta plus delta equals pi. That's the most important quality which I can, important characteristic of these angles which I can derive from the fact that this is an inscribed convex quadrilateral. Now, this actually allows us to, dis to, to, to express uh, trigonometric functions of uh, gamma and delta in terms of alpha and beta, right? All right, let's think about it. Cosine gamma is equal to cosine pi minus alpha equals to, okay, what is a cosine? Let's just remember. It's abscissa. This is the x uh, coordinate. So if this is alpha, then this is pi minus pi minus alpha, and abscissa is x coordinate, and obviously they have an opposite sign and equal in magnitude. So it's minus cosine alpha. How about sine of gamma? Sine is ordinate. Ordinates are the same. So sine of pi minus alpha is equal to sine of alpha. So I'm going to use, obviously, these things to convert cosine uh, gamma and uh, cosine delta in terms of alpha and beta. So what I will have is, I will have cosine alpha, and now this is minus cosine alpha, but it is a square. So it's exactly the same. Same thing is beta. So I will have two cosines of alpha and two cosines of beta. Square alpha plus two cosines square beta, minus two. That's on the left side. Now, what do I have on the right side? This is left. What do I have on the right side? OK. This cosine is cosine gamma. It's minus cosine of alpha. And this is the minus cosine of beta. So I have two negatives which gives me the positive, so basically it's cosine alpha square and cosine beta square. So it's two times cosine square alpha times cosine square beta. Now this, sine is the same, so basically I can replace sine of gamma with sine of alpha. Same as, so it's sine square alpha, and same thing with beta and delta. Sine square beta. That's I have on the left side. All right. Well, obviously, in this case, I have to replace sine with 1 minus cosine squared and 1 minus cosine squared, since sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 
1, right? So what do I have in this case? I have 2 times cosine square alpha cosine square beta minus. Now, I have these uh, to multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus cosine square is minus cosine square, what I have minus here. So it's plus cosine square beta minus cosine alpha uh, square alpha by 1. It's minus, and this is minus. So again, it's plus cosine square alpha. And cosine square alpha and cosine square beta plus minus, so it's the minus sign. Okay. Does it help? Well, this is reduced, right? And what do I have? I have 2 times cosine square, 2 times cosine square, and minus 2. That's exactly the same as this one. So if I multiply 2 by 1, 2, 3, I will have exactly this one. So that's the end of the proof. We have exactly the same uh, identity. Now, uh, as an exercise for those who are not afraid of long calculations, I can tell you, but I'm not going to prove it uh, here uh, as part of this lecture, I can tell you that exactly the same theorem is true not only when alpha plus gamma is equal to pi and beta plus delta is equal to pi. Not only this, there is a weaker condition which also results in exactly the same identity. Namely, alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta is equal to 2 pi. Now, this is weaker than the combination of these two. Because from these two, this one follows, obviously, but not the other way around. So, the theorem, however, is true even for this particular condition. So, try to prove it yourself. Next. Phi is acute angle. Then 2 cosine uh, phi over 2 equals square root 1 of sine plus square root mi minus sine. So for an acute angle, this is a true formula which expresses the cosine of a half an angle through sines uh, of the full angle. All right. Um, now, phi is acute angle, which means uh, sine and cosine are positive, and they are from 0 to 1. They are less than 1, actually. So these are all positive numbers. And under the uh, square root, I also have the positive number, always. So if that's true, I can safely say that this particular equality is uh, completely equivalent to the square of this equality. I can square both sides of the positive numbers, and I will get exactly the same thing. So it's 2 cosine square phi over 2 is equal to square of this, which is 1 plus sine phi, plus 2 product this times this would be 1 minus sine square phi plus square of this. Right? Now, obviously, this is cosine square. And again, considering that the phi is an acute angle, square root of a cosine square is a cosine. So now, sines are reduced. So the right part would be 2 plus 2 cosine phi. Now, is this a true? Is uh, Now we can reduce basically by 2. So I will have cosine square phi is equal to 1 plus cosine phi. Is that true? Well, um, 
I don't remember again all the formulas, but I do remember the formula for cosine of the sum of two angles. Now, cosine of 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2, which is 5, this one, equals to cosine squared 5 over 2 minus sine times sine, which is sine squared 5 over 2 equals. Now, sine should be replaced with 1 minus cosine. So I will have 2 cosine squared minus, uh, 5 minus 1. Is that right? Or I did make, make a mistake or something. So 2 cosines, oh, I'm sorry. This is my mistake. It's 4, it's not 2. I'm squaring that thing. I see my mistake now. OK, which, which actually means, this is cosine 5, which actually means, no, 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 what do I, what do I, <laughs> sorry. Okay, now this is right. <laughs> cosine minus, yes. Okay, so from here I get 2 cosine square phi over 2 is equal to 1 plus cosine phi, which is exactly what we have. Okay, so, by the way, is this the end of the proof? Well, quite frankly, not exactly, because what I have actually um, done I derive from this, this. Now, this is a true statement, I agree with this. But if I have derived from God knows what, a true statement using strict, strict logical uh, transformations, it doesn't mean that this is actually true. Because from false, I can always derive a true through a correct logical conclusions. Like, for instance, if minus one is equal to 1. This is a false statement. I square both sides, and I will have 1 equals to 1, which is correct statement, right? So, and by the way, I did square both sides. So that's not, so that's not really a, a true proof. Now, what is a true proof? Here is what I should say. All the transformations which I have done are reversible, which means from here I can get here, 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 and what's most important from here, I can always get here because um, both sides uh, I, I consider as a positive angles, right? Uh, I mean, the acute angles, so uh, all members are positive. So I can actually say that if a square is equal to b square and a greater than zero and b greater than zero, then from this fall, uh, follows that a is equal to b then I can extract the square root from both sides. That's what's very important. For positive numbers, that's true. So, now I can say that since all these transformations are reversible from obvious uh, uh, identity, we derive this one, and that's the end of the proof. And by the way, what I wanted actually to suggest you again as a kind of a self-study thing, the same, well, similar theorem actually is true for a sine. So try to prove this one yourself. Well, this is the end of this lecture. I have presented you a few problems uh, on conditional identities and how to prove them. Um, uh, I might actually suggest some, some other problems I'll see. But that's the end of it. Thank you very much. And uh, don't forget, you have to really um, sign to unisor.com. Uh, try to organize your educational process as a process, which means you will have uh, somebody like a supervisor or a parent also signed in as, as a supervisor. Uh, enroll you in the program, and then you will be able to take exams, and uh, your supervisor can, can actually examine the results of your exam, and, uh, well, consider this course as completed, or any component of this course. Thanks very much, and good luck.